an awesome spectacle played to an empty theater. Life seems to go back to normal. But the future of every species alive today, from the lowliest insect to the human race, is now hanging by a thread. It is now 24 hours after the gamma ray burst. Extinction begins at the microscopic level. In the upper reaches of Earth's atmosphere, the gamma rays have destroyed 30% of the protective ozone layer. Now ultraviolet radiation from the sun is able to pour in. The light is unbearably harsh, 50 times more intense than at the Sahara Desert. Well, let's just say if a gamma ray burst hit the planet, every tanning salon would go out of business, no longer necessary. Anything on land would definitely be fried. Unseen to the naked eye, the planet's plankton, the microscopic animals and plants that float near the ocean surface, are the first to feel the effects. If you could take a drop of water from the ocean and put it on a slide, look at it under a microscope, you'd see all kinds of tiny things teeming within that slide. And basically, those tiny things are the things that bigger things eat. The life-giving sun burns the majority of these organisms to death. The entire base of the food chain is wiped out. If you disrupt the phytoplankton, the most immediate effect is going to be on those animals that are feeding on the phytoplankton. These tend to be very small animals, often they're arthropods. Now, lack of food joins the harsh sunlight, wreaking havoc on the plankton feeders. The surface water used to be a nursery for many trilobite species but the larva can't survive the scorching UV rays. It's like an atomic bomb attack. It's the radiation you don't see. You can't see it. You get sick. You don't know why. It's just in the air. With the death of so many of the corals and the animals on top, the whole food chain begins to collapse. And so down through the food chain, it's like dominoes toppling. UV radiation is most intense in the tropics. Coral reefs begin to die. The disaster spreads from there. In almost every corner of the globe, coral reefs are starving to death. The devastation ripples up the food chain. More and more animals suffer with hunger pangs. As the weeks go by, the destruction of coral reefs grows. Only three months have passed, and yet the side effects of the death rays are felt far and wide. Mating season for these coiled nautiloids is in full swing. These cousins of the straight nautiloids are generally small, just the width of your hand. But the coiled shell is a much more maneuverable design than the straight shell. Mating rituals are more important than ever. The survival of the entire species is at stake. The females pursue the males. The more colorful his shell, the more irresistible she will find him. Reproduction had an awful lot to do, I think, with who survived and who didn't. The way you reproduced may have had as much to do with survival or not as the mode of life of the adult. The world may be collapsing around her, but she's determined to secure a future for her offspring. Her eggs will incubate for the next eight months. Only time will tell whether this mother's efforts are in vain. In what is now the Atlantic coast of North America, giant straight nautiloids abandon the dying reefs in search of food. They move into brackish water. But this is the Eurypterid's turf. 
with nautiloids moving into these waters in search of food, the ancient power struggle with the Eryptorids is renewed. This may be the Eryptorids' territory, but fortune still favors the larger creatures. For the Nautiloids, it's a feast. Only a few Eryptorids manage to escape. But famine is inescapable, even for the once powerful. As the gamma ray apocalypse intensifies, extinction threatens every species. From microscopic plankton, to the giant nautiloids, to our own ancestors, the jawless fish, Astraspis. If they don't survive, will there be a future for anyone? by a nearby supernova may have triggered the first great mass extinction in the history of the planet. The death rays set in motion a horrific chain reaction that threatens all life on Earth, present and future. Eight months into the disaster, the world is drastically changed. The shattered molecules of Earth's atmosphere swirl around the globe, forming a witch's brew of toxic gases. Atoms realign into nitrogen dioxide, the noxious brown gas we know today as smog. The thick blanket of putrid air blots out half the sun's rays. World temperatures plummet 10 degrees Fahrenheit. 